This is ridiculous. Call for a personal foul. That was absolutely ridiculous. The Boston Bruins have won the Stanley Cup. Up on down. Here comes a one-two pitch. Red Sox win the World Series. I don't know. It's tough. I, t- Tom's up there, man. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 7 of the Beantown Takes podcast here. I am Jesse Almeida. I'm a Boston sports fanatic. I'm here with Mike. What's going on, guys? We are back from the game last week. Yep. That was awesome. What did you think of the game? Cold. It was very, it was very, it was cold. very cold. I but agree. It was a good time. Yeah. I was, I, was supp- I was impressed with how they're doing it, and I enjoyed it. All right. It was a good so- game. We got a lot to cover because we pushed the podcast back a week. Yep. So you want to go first? I'm going to give you the floor first oh. this week. All right. With the draft coming up, I am predicting that the Patriots will move up to the eighth seed with a uh, trade from the Panthers. Okay. And they will select Justin Fields. Nice. Justin Fields quarterback, Ohio State. That is my prediction for the draft. Yep. Uh, that is my hope. However, that is what I believe that they should do, but I also believe that they will probably move back and select some linebacker from, from Bill some, Belichick. They're going to select some linebacker from a college we've never heard of. Yep. Or something stupid like that. I would love Justin Fields. Oh, that that if they get Justin Fields and move up to the eighth overall pick in the draft and draft Justin Fields, that's a win in my book. It's a, but it's only a win if he starts week one. If he if Cam Newton somehow hey, he's gonna start week one. He's gonna start week one. I'm if, telling you right now. If Cam Newton beats out Justin Fields, then you wasted a draft pick. Well, you, I you wasted a draft pick because you will not make the playoffs if Cam Newton starts any of the 17 games this year. So I don't think it's going to I don't think it's going to be the fact that Cam Newton beats him out for the spot. I think it's just going to be the fact that he's going to that Justin Fields is just is just going to run behind Cam Newton for a little bit to get to, to uh learn the system or whatever. But I am telling you, it's still going to be Cam Newton week number 1. I I, I don't want to see it either, but it, I I I just don't see it any other way. And for his development. So, let let Justin Fields learn the system, learn behind Cam Newton for a little bit, because they kind of both have the same play style, and then go from there. But I I, I, I love the fact that uh, they're really interested in Justin Fields, and I think that's been the guy for them since day one. I'm glad Mac Jones is going to be moving up to number three. I am surprised at how much... Uh, Mike McCorkle Jones has jumped up. You know this is his name McCorkle. That's his name. Really? That's his name. That's where he got Mac from. Oh my goodness! So, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I'd rather not put our franchise somebody with the name McCorkle. I agree. But you know what? It's whatever. Um, good for him for getting the bag because he went from being a fourth round pick this year, maybe a maybe a third round pick beginning of college football year to now being the third overall pick. Right. Never heard of a jump that crazy before. Right. So good for him. Um, but, yeah, that's my opening take. It's Justin Fields, number eight to the New England Patriots. All right. So my opening take. Yep. Let's take this off. Oh. Uh, they suck, bad. and we're back. No. That's my opening take. Um, I was very impressed with how this team has been going. And especially being there last week, too, like, I know they lost still. They lost 7-3. You lost in 10 innings. The the guy, the runners starting at second base, that rule really sucks. It puts your home team to such a disadvantage. Um, I understand that game. They probably still would have lost either way because Mitch Hanniger shoved it up, up your butt there at the end. But they've been beating good competition. They beat the Twins three out of four. The Twins are the worst team in the in the entire league. Okay, but still, they're no they're they're, they're a talented roster. They they're underachieving right now. So I still view them as a very talented roster. What, um, did you play any of their of their good pitchers? Yeah, you played um Barrios. Didn't you lose to Barrios? No, you won. 
You, I don't know about that one. I'm you, sure it was a I double thought, hit. It was I a double they, hit. It was a double hitter. You can. He's gonna check that for you right now. But you took three or four from Minnesota. You split with the White Sox. You split with the Blue Jays, and you, uh, you split with Seattle, right? Yeah. yeah you split with Seattle. Seattle has been hot this to the start, as they always are, really. Uh, the White Sox are a very talented team, too. I mean, you're competing oh, yeah. with... They did beat Barrios. They, they beat Barrios. They beat Maeda. Those, that, that's their two best pitchers right there. Yeah, but they beat them in the seven innings. Like, all right, Barrios 7-1, yeah, you're going to win that game. But 3-2 to Maeda, I don't know. They could pull that one out. Maybe. Like, it, I don't like the seven-inning rule, too. I don't like the seven-inning double I don't like the seven-inning rules where they don't consider that a legitimate game. Right. Like, with Bumgarner there. Uh, like throwing the no hitter, right? And they're gonna th- and they're gonna say that that's not a legitimate one. I don't know, but yeah, no, you, you split against some competition that like you know, whatever. And then you beat the Mets last night too. That was a nice win. Yeah, we'll see for what, you. Yeah, we'll see what what they can do tonight against Degrom. I I feel like they're gonna get absolutely blanked by Degrom. We got Nick Pavetta tonight. I love this guy. I absolutely love this guy. Like he he's he's. he's Mid, he's like high, upper twenties or whatever, and he, he he's trying to get himself back in the league. Like, I like this guy. This guy seems pretty good. He looked like it was. It looks like he's. This guy's gonna be a good pickup for them. And this team, I'm telling you, underrated. This no. team is underrated. Overperforming. You think overperforming? Do you remember Seattle Mariners 2019? Number one team in the league by five games. And in the bottom of the basement that that same year, one on a fifty game losing streak. What talent did they have though in twenty nineteen? Really? Doesn't matter. They started out just as hot. I'm just saying you got to be like I'm not buying in on this team until at least j- end of May, because that's going to be legitimate. April is a tough month where a lot of people are still figuring it out. I'm just saying that I I, I can't buy in on them yet because right now Kansas City's the number one team in the in the league, in the entire. League Kansas Damn. City is so you want to tell me that Kansas City we should be buying in on them? Well, that's... you want to tell me you to buy in on Kansas City? Well, they, they do have Andrew Benintendi. Oh they're, well, they're, yeah, okay. Mr. Benintendi, yeah, well, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> Benintendi's really doing a whole lot for them. But that's what you're telling me is to buy in on Kansas City? No, get out of here. Get out of here with that. I, I I'm just more I I'm more in the favor of hot starts. That's just how I've always been. And if you can start off winning, especially here in Boston, especially here in Boston, if you can start off a season on the right foot, that just shows a sign for the uh, season coming for you. But I will say this, though. They have to start playing better at home. What are they, 8-8 eight and eight at home? Yep, 500. So they, they have to play better at home. They, 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 there's no doubt about that. They have to play better at home. That's my opening take. We're going to start off with the Red Sox and our experience from the game last week. Uh, the Red Sox, maybe they're back. Maybe they're back. I don't want to jinx it right away because it's a long season, but I'm... For the love of God, hoping that this team is back. I'm hoping this team is back, and they, 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 I hope. I just, I just hope. I'm just hoping for this team to back that they're back. Um, after seeing the games, some of these games last week, it has shown me that this team is back. But you, 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 you want to see a little bit more from them. I mean, I understand that too, but. Who knows though? What do you what are your thoughts on them? Uh, uh I'm still 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 not decided on them. Like I said, they haven't sh- really shown me that they can they can beat good competition that are that's off to bad starts. Like we said the Twins. Yeah. I've been off to a pretty bad start. Um I mean, the White Sox in Seattle have been overachieving, yes. 
the Mets are nine and nine right now. They've only played eighteen games to year twenty three, twenty two. Yep. So, and you know, poor Degrom. I think I should have said this that Degrom has only had. Degrom has the most hits when he's been a pitcher. Like when he's pitched, he's had three really? hits. Everybody else on the team has had two or less. Jeez. When he's gone on a pitch, so like I said, I think that they that the Mets are unperforming as well. Um, tonight will be a good test because it's the first time they're they're actually facing against a real pitcher, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. Uh, like I said, let's see what it go how it goes into May. But right now they're trending in a good direction, but. Uh, it's tough. I, I I I just like seeing this team have fun again. I just like seeing them enjoy the game of ba- playing baseball, playing with playing 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 until the final out is made, not not giving up at all. Like I, I, compared to last year, last year was a dumpster fire. You were the dumpster fire of the MLB last year. Yep. And this year, you it, it, this is an entertaining team, like. We got Bogarts, who's now catching on fire. Uh, last week, he had, I th- believe, three home runs in, in game in like seven games or whatever. He's starting to catch on fire. JD Martinez has been playing well this year. This whole entire team is been has been fun to watch. This whole entire t- team. There's a couple people that I hate, and I will give Garrett Richards credit, even though he sucks. And blows last night. He pitched good. He pitched good last night against a good lineup. And the, and the, I just, I I'm seeing a lot of st- things happen this year with this team that did not happen last year. And this team is together for sure, unlike last year. Yep. Uh. Like I said, I, the hitting's there. Yeah, you, for sure. You have like Martinez is killing it. Bogarts is catching fire. Devers, he he's almost guaranteed a home run every other game. It feels like um, Kike Hernandez has you know gone from being the platoon guy to actually being something. And Verdugo's a good. You mean up. Enrique? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Verdugo's being is really good. And, you know he's showing that he knows what he's talking about. And he's very plate disciplined. Oh, I and love my guy Verdugo. I just uh, teach me how to Dougie. What what are you just gonna do though when you when everybody starts slumping? At the same time, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, everybody's catching hot, like fire at the same time, but there's no way they're all going to be able to sustain this for the entire 152, I think, is this year? I don't think. So, uh, it's 162. Or, oh, it's a full season? It's a full season, yep. Okay, but still, uh, what happens when they start slumping? Yeah, I, I, I that's, mean. That's the thing, in my opinion. Like, There's just going to be times where you are hot, and there are going to be times where you are not as hot. Hot, I should say. Heart. You gotta be kidding me. But um that's just how baseball is. You just gotta find a way to work it work around and come back. But I mean if this, if that's where I wanna see. I wanna see this team now I feel like I just wanna see this team down a little bit and then work their way back up. If they can. If they can't if they can I should say, then this team could possibly be making the playoffs. If they can't and they go on like a nine game skate in a row, or whatever. Then, I like you said, I'm not. I don't. I'm not sure this team is there yet. I'm just not sure. But I like what this team has been doing. So now we're gonna go into the game that we went to last week. Um, what were your thoughts of Fenway? From last Thursday, I wish it was that empty all the time. I know, right? As as much as it was eatery, that there was not a whole lot of people there. It was very, very calming. Awesome. Oh, it was being able to you know not have to like fight around somebody's head to see the action. Right. It's uh, the lines weren't long. It was in and like we were in and out of the city. Uh, it was fun. I'll give it. I'll give it the credit. I think Fenway's. The Fenway staff there is doing an awesome job. I, I I give I give a lot of credit to this Fenway staff. Absolutely. Yeah. I think they're doing it right, and I like I like the way that they're doing it. Twenty five percent capacity starts May tenth, so yeah. that that means Fenway Park will be holding about ten thousand people. It's like, uh, about it's like nine. What they're doing now. Yeah. Okay. I 
I still think that would be pretty, like, that'd be just as good. Like, yeah. Like, it won't be too crazy. Uh, you'll still probably want to fight anybody because you're probably not going to sit people like directly behind each other. Right. And you'll because get... last I saw, like when I checked out, it looked like to be it was four rows. Yep. In front to the person in front of you. Yeah. And then like two rows and to the right. Right. So probably something where it would be like they'll probably stagger a little bit closer to each other. But yep. I'll take that. Like. As long as there's someone directly, you know, fat head and directly in front of me, <laughs> it sounds perfect. To Absolutely. Me. Um, so let's go game wise Thursday. All right, sorry guys, we had some technical difficulties there. We had to pause it for a second. So, as I was saying, what were your thoughts on the game, like game wise at least? Uh, that Duncan, uh, former BC kid, um, home, kind of a hometown kid. I knew he was from New York, but he played at BC. Kid was dealing. I'll give him the credit. Uh, he went, you know, he only gave up two runs, the same as Pavetta, but uh, he seemed like he had a little more control. And then Pavetta, Jesus, Pavetta was oh my god, dealing this. He game. was good. I love this kid. I love Pavetta, and yeah. I want to say too. Yeah. I'm sorry because at the beginning of the year, I thought Pavetta should be in the bullpen. I thought he was not cut out to be. A starting pitcher for this team, but I'm sorry, he seems good. Yeah, I mean, he gave up uh, one hit, three walks, and only and two earned. Very like you know, in six in six innings. He gave I'll you a, he gave you a chance to win that game, and that's what these pitchers need to do in order for you to have success. You need to be able to have a chance to win a game because if they don't give you a chance to win the game. Most of the time, you're not going to come out on an off offensive explosion and win the game. You're going to be losing that game. Yeah. Uh, Pavetta, I, I, I like him. I want them to sign him long term. Yep, me I, too. I think he should stay. I think he was a good piece that they found that was pretty cheap. Uh, it was for Hembry and Workman, right? Harambe. Yeah, that's who he came over for. Um, and I think it'd be a shame if they traded because i think workman's a pretty decent bullpen guy versus you know some of the people you have in your bullpen right, now yep. i think it'd be a shame if you let him walk and don't yeah exactly don't yeah that's that's what i'm saying on that one so for my end of this take for the uh game i love the game obviously i've been to fenway before during this pandemic so yep. i already knew what it was like to be at a game for the red sox but game wise there's a couple things that I took out from this game. Do you have a new, uh, another pitcher that you hate? Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! I have a new pitcher that I absolutely hate. And his name is coming from your Yankees, Adam Ottavino. Why do you think we got rid of him? D d there you go. That, like, that's why you got the, rid of him. The Yankees have always had a pretty good bullpen. Not, like, not this year. What happened to this guy? He's a bomb. Oh. <laughs> uh, Bum. Certified bum. He he looked he looked wild for most of the game. Like he had no control on his slider and he, his fastball. He's faced five batters. He's alright, so he threw fifteen pitches, he faced five batters, right? Out of those five batters, th uh, he threw three of them first pitch strikes. He threw six strikes the entire that's time. He was that's out. crazy. Like and then the bunt, we got to talk what about. What are we doing? We got to talk about that bunt, that bunt play that uh, Seattle did. Oh, and yeah, he, he threw, threw, it, threw it away. Why are you going to third base on that? They're giving you it, an out. Go to first base on that play. And if any of you have seen Moneyball, Billy Bean, who Hein Bloom is kind of a disciple of, of Billy yeah. Bean with the Moneyball and the low budget and all that stuff and figuring out, you know, the, the nerds. Yep. The nerds who have taken over. And Billy Bean and his nerds said, whenever somebody bunts, always take the shirt out. Take the shirt out. Take the shirt out. That is what the nerds want you to do. Right. What did he do? Didn't do that. So I'm surprised Adam Montevino has not been trade, DFA, options, any of those. Any of those. Yep. Because... That, 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 that's an easy play. That arguably lost you the game. Arguably lost you the game. Yep. It could have saved you. It could have saved you the run and prevented, you know, Hanniger's three-run shove it. And then the second thing that I'm going to add on to from the game is I wish you got it on camera. I want Benintendi back. 
I absolutely can't stand oh, Fran that, Franchi Cordero. I can't my, stand him. That was my go-to line. I did say that at, like almost every time Franchi Cordero <laughs> touched the field. I did say that because man, did he blow? Why did he? Why was he playing? Like I, we, I got home and then the next day I talked to my dad about it. He said, "Why was he playing so in on on batters? He wasn't playing. He." he he said, "If he wasn't playing, if he was playing more back, he's catch, he's making those plays. He would have caught that, absolutely that, that double that scored the first run in extras, and even the Pivetta, yeah. and even the one with that where uh, Pivetta lost a no hitter. Right? Yes. Um, I, it's something to do with. I don't think he's comfortable with the wall yet because a lot of outfielders when they come here struggle placement wise because they feel like because they're when you play, you know." Right field. Right. You have a certain amount of steps that most people, like, have a, you know, I played this amount of steps in from the wall so I know when I go for a fly ball, what's a home run, when, when am I going to crash into the wall. They have that mental note in them. So maybe he's playing up because the wall is so short. Um, maybe he's, just, you know, playing up because he, like, I understand when the runner on second and you're trying to prevent the scoring, but most of the times you try to keep the ball in front of you. Right. So... Placement wise, like this, I always question. I question why they ordered Benintendi anyways for the hitting. Now for the fielding, right? I thought this kid at least could be something defensively for you, and maybe that's why you traded for him. But this kid's got nothing going for him. But the the, the, the only reason why they got him was because he hits with power, and he's not even doing a good job doing that right now. So it's just like, what what did you get him for? Because you didn't want to pay Ben and Tendi, I, I, I assume. That's the only thing I can think of, unfortunately. I would I would argue that this is what they should do. Send Franchi Cordero down to Worcester. Worcester. And they should play... Um, Verdugo in left. Nope. In or, left okay. Or Oh, okay, fine. Um, you can have Hunter Renfro in left. Renfro can play left. You could have Kike play center. Yep. And Verdugo play right. And then bring up Michael Chavis. You could. I, w I like Dougie playing center just because I like his speed. I think that kid's got absolute wheels. And not nothing will compare to Jackie Bradley, but I think he's a good heir to the throne that right. Jackie left. Yep. Keep, I would keep Dougie in center. I think he has a good arm, too. Um... I would play Marwin Gonzalez in the left. I, you could do that, too. And you can bring Chavis up, and Chavis can play the but, outfield. Chavis can play first. Yep. Uh, DH, you know, he can play around. But Cordero, he's not a major league player in my eyes. He's just not a major league player. No. I don't think he had more than 10, uh, sorry, I don't think he had more than 100 career ABs before he got here. That's, so I you're know. Training, you, you traded a perennial, you know, borderline all-star. Right, and Ben and Tenny, right? Because there's a lot of times you got pretty close in the all-star voting. Yep. No, you know, versus a guy who's unproven. Right. Who's, what is he, 20? Oh, I'll look it up right now. He's 26. 26, and he's only had... Ben and Tenny's like 26. No, no, Ben Tenny's, oh. no, Cordero. Cordero's 26. I think Benny's like 26, 27, too. No, Benny's young. Benny was a first-round pick, and my laptop died. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Watch out. Yep. I'm pretty sure because Ben Tenney was like a 2015 first round pick. He's pulling it up for you guys right now. Oh, he's, oh, he's 26 as well. That's what I thought. Yep. Okay, so they're the same age. So it's not like you got somebody who was younger. You got yeah. a Walmart version of... The, I don't even know who. The only thing is that Cordero... A Walmart version of Willie Mo Pena. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference you is that the, his, his service time clock is so low that you still have time you know, giving him... Crap money, basically. Yeah. That's basically the only reason why I got him. Right. Oh. So, Bruins. Uh, yes. Yes. Bruins. Bravo. The trade done to way. The Bruins. Success. Don Sweeney, uh, you're staying another year. You're the only GM in Boston right now that's not on the hot seat. Yeah. In my opinion. Absolutely. <laughs> What's up, Boston Bruins? Boston. Oh, the Bruins. I got to give a round of applause to the Bruins. They've done very well. They've done very well for the most part. They had two bad... They had two losses 
in the course of the last week and a half, but they, they for the most part, they've played really good. They've done really well. Yeah. Um, the take of let the kids play net kind of worked. Yep. Um, I know Vladar is, uh, you know, not as good as Swayman, but I think if you go into next season with Swayman being your number one goaltender and Vladar being your backup, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad. I think you know. I, I think you know. If, you, if Rass was staying on a cheap contract, I'd keep him. Yeah, I agree. But yep. if, but if he still wants you know six more million like he's getting now, he can go shove it, and I'll take the, the kids and let it ride. Right. Because this Swayman kid, Jesus, has he stood on his head for you? Absolutely. Swayman has been very calm. He just looks poised. And I was watching a Bruins game one 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 of these nights. I think it was. The Buffalo five to one victory that Swayman played in. Yep. And they made a comparison to him that I really liked. What was it? It was he's kind of like Ryan Miller from back in the day with Buffalo. Buffalo uh, Miller was just poised. He was calm. He didn't let the big moment. Face him, and if Swayman can pull out a career like Ryan Miller did, that is a very, very solid goaltender right there. It's the missing piece you needed for the puzzle. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, like even that one zero loss that we just had to, to the Penguins, right? So, like that's a very good team. Yep. Very good offensive team. Yes. He only let up one goal. Right. That, you know, if you had you know a little bit better, you know, getting out of your own zone, yeah, should have been avoided. But that kid stood on his head for you and gave you the chance all the way to the end. Like, I don't know. I still think that you should let the kids ride it out because he's, he's doing awesome. They've won seven out of the last nine games, the Bruins. Have won the last seven out of the nine games. Um, I think that this team is going to make the playoffs. I think there's no doubt about that. Um, right now, the Rangers are right there. That That's probably your only threat at this moment to knock you off the playoffs. But this team, since the trade deadline, has been phenomenal. You are one point out from third place with the New York Islanders. You are five points out from second place against Pittsburgh. And you got a lot of games against... It's the Sabres, who have been eliminated. You have games against the Devils, who have been eliminated. And you're going to face Washington. You're going to face the Islanders, who look like they've already clinched a playoff spot. Um, the Islanders game, you might have some trouble with. But the, that last game against Washington in Washington, they probably will rest their players, so maybe you can squeak out a win there. Um, I mean, I'd be okay if you get into the three spot because uh, you saw, like you said, yep, one point behind the Islanders with a game in hand. Yep, um, and I'm pretty sure the Islanders might be done playing the. Uh, I'm gonna open this up another window so I can check it out. Yep. Uh, I picture the Islanders are done playing the Sabres too, so they have to actually play some actual competition. Yep. Um, but yeah, like you're saying, uh, Ed, because you beat the Penguins in the season series. Yes, you did. You beat them five three. So you own the tiebreaker if you tie them in points. Oh, I'm not talking about tying them. I'm just saying if you make the playoffs, and right? No matter who you play, like if you ha- if you have to play the, I'd rather play the Penguins first round. Right. Better better chance to do something. Me too. And then let the. Uh, you want the Islanders deal with the Capitals because maybe the Islanders can squeak them out, and I'd rather play the Islanders than the Capitals. The Islanders have been playing. The Islanders have played well against the. Um, okay, so Capitals this year. They have, so the Islanders have the Rangers, who are playing for a playoff spot. Buffalo, New Jersey, and then us. So the Islanders have a pretty weak schedule. Yep. But still, we have a game in hand. Um, I feel confident. Yeah, me too. I feel very confident. Yep, and. Man, we got to give a. I think we have to give a round of applause to Don Sweeney for getting this guy right here. I think we have to give him a round of applause for taking a risk with a. And it's looking like this is going to be a very, very high reward for Don Sweeney right now. Taylor Hall. Yep. What. 
this kid has been great for you since coming over from Buffalo. Absolutely great. Four goals, three assists, seven points. What's his plus minus? Does Eight. it show? Eight. So, what what more do I really have to say about this kid? I, I definitely think you signed this kid long term after this year. I would sign him long term as long as it's nothing that's going to break your bank. Um, because you you losing Rask this off season in Hawak. You have roughly about thirteen million. If you have to tie up eight million or seven million to Taylor Hall, I'm not for it. But if Taylor Hall is willing to take another, you know, less money either long term or you know a one year deal, so he has another prove it year, so he make you know he has another big contract. I'd take it because I'd rather get another blue liner in my opinion in this off season. I'd rather them sign some. Like I really wish they got Pedrangelo last year. So I think for free agents for the Bruins, it's Rask, Halak. Yep. Um, Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall. I think Corrali's a free agent from what I saw. Um, there's a couple other people that I know are free agents. So you, you're losing a little bit of money here. And honestly, if you have if you have that solid first and second line would and Taylor Hall is on your second line. I mean, the third line, I feel like you have that set already. With You'll have that with Richie, um, Charlie Coyle, and who else? I think Wagner. Then I'm all for it. All right, so coming up, expiring contracts coming up this year. Oh, wow, you got a lot of them. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, you got Taylor Hall, David Krejci, Tuka Rass, Brandon Carlo, Halak, Richie, Mike Riley, Sean Corrali, Kevin Miller, Trent Frederick, Nick Camper. Rich- so Nick Richie is a restricted free agent. Okay. Yeah. Tenorti. And that's really about the only players that actually play that you would be losing. So l- l- let's ask this now. Who would you bring back out of this list? Uh, Taylor Hall. Yep. Tuka Rask in the right contract. Yep. Brandon Carlo for sure. Yep. I think he's been a good defenseman for you. Yep. Uh, Nick Ritchie. Yep. Mike Riley. Corrali. Miller. Frederick. Yep. And me, uh, maybe Camford if you can't get any other replacements. And that would be it. That's about it. All right. Well, yep. Gonna, I, I got to agree with that. I'm yep. going to go to the all to what we have for the entire. So, the entire league. Ovechkin. Getzloff. Uh, Patrick Lane with Columbus. Zetterberg? Oh, wow, he's 40. Wow, he's an old guy. Uh, yeah. Brandon Saad, uh, left winger, 28. Uh, trying to think of who else has some... Oh, you can bring back Dougie. Dougie Hamilton. I think it would be very funny if you, had, if you ever do go and Dougie got the two Duggies. Oh, man. Yeah, that the, would be hilarious. Du- dueling Duggies. Yep. Um... I, I think there's a lot of a lot of good players out there. Uh, Felinga, you know... Do something. They got the cap. They're gonna have the cap space. Yeah, might as well make a splash. Right. So, I think the door's wide open for this team. To be honest with you, I mean, I definitely think Taylor Hall should be a key, a guy that they should definitely want to bring back next year. Yes. That's definitely that. That would be that. I think that would be where I start. For, in free agency, trying to get trying to get him back. Yep. And then go from there. Yeah. Because his, his number, his his pro, produce, produce numbers that he has with the Bruins right now has been insane. Is this is this has been the best I've seen him play in a little in a while. It's probably the best he's played since you know, you know, 2014 maybe. Yep. So that's what like that's what I'm looking looking at right now. Uh, get some get some good players. Get some good young players. Yep. Um. Get it, bring in a veteran. But yep. I would, those are who I'm bringing back. I wouldn't, you know, Halak can go. I wouldn't bring back Rask unless it was the right contract. Right. I like, I like Richie. I like Corrali. I like Miller and Carlo. Yep. Um, keep them here, but yeah. Yep. That's what I'm saying. I, I think that you have, that there's an opportunity to get the right people to, you know, make this, this run last. But I would not bring back Krejci. 
And Wes Krejci's going to take like a million dollar contract and not another eight million dollar. Right. Yep. That's ridiculous. So. Yep. Yeah. All right. So that was pretty much quick for the Bruins. I mean, they've been playing good, so like we don't really have that much. I mean, we have we we have a lot of good things to say about them. Yeah. Well, in between the last two podcasts, we were actually making a joke about how it was hard for us to talk about. You know, the Bruins and Celtics, they actually were playing really well. Well, Celtics? Ah, yeah, yeah, that was a little too early, too late. Uh, I, 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 to you green teamers out there, I told you guys. I told you guys, and we get on to this Celtics team that is god-awful. Horrible. Well, I've been a fan of Boston Celtics for, uh, you know, my whole life pretty much. My first Celtics team was back when I was like seven years old. The Boston Celtics became legendary. Yeah. Celtics! Celtics! Alright, so guys, I hate to say that I told you guys so, but I told you so. I told you guys, even though they were on a six-game winning streak or however long that winning streak was, it was too early to say that this team is back. And honestly, they won the games that we, you and I wanted them to win from our last podcast. But man, after that, they're right back to what they were before. Um, they did, yeah. No, they beat the teams that we wanted them to beat. Yep. And then as soon as they were done playing those teams, they sucked again. Yep. Absolutely suck. Where's Kendrick Perkins? I need Perk again. I need Perk again. Yep. Where, where's Perkins? Where's Paul Pierce? Where's somebody? Because... Oh, Paul Pierce got fired. Oh, yeah, that's true. Paul Pierce got fired. But, like, he can come back on uh, NBC NBC Boston for... Yeah. But I need somebody. And there was two games that I was like... I was thinking, I was like, man, I want to go look at some Celtics tickets right now. This was one of the games here... Oh, when, my God. Absolute beauty of a game. This was a great game by the Celtics. And honestly, this game was better than Jason Tatum's 51-point game that he had against the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. Like, this was like, he beat a legitimate team, like a legitimate playoff contending team. Steph Curry, I just want to say before we I continue, Steph Curry, what this guy is not human at all. This guy is absolutely not human. He is from a different planet. He's on a different breed. He is a once-in-a-lifetime player. But Tatum and the Celtics showed up for this game, and they played well this game. Yeah, uh, it seemed like Tatum had an answer every time Curry did something. Like It was like, oh, uh, anything you can do, I can do better. Yep. Kind of a deal. Obviously, you can't shoot the, the deep three like Curry can. But... Right. Like, I think Curry had 49, Tatum had 44. Like, they were neck and neck with each other, you know yep. what I mean? Like, Tatum Tatum did what he had to do. He willed them to the win. Yep. And then they lost, the, like, the, the two nights later. Yeah. To the Bulls. To the Bulls. To the Bulls. Who you needed to beat. You needed to beat the Bulls. You need to beat bad competition, like the Bulls. Yep. So, it's... They're sliding, and they're sliding poorly. Yep. And there was another game, honestly, where I was like, "Yeah, maybe this team is really back." And this, it was it was the Suns. They played good again. We were at Fenway while this game was going on, but the Celtics. I don't think they had Jalen Brown this game. No, nope, they did not. They did not have Jalen Brown. It was just Kemba and Tatum. Tatum, really, for the most part. And you beat a full rostered. Phoenix Suns team. They had Chris Paul. They had DeAndre Ayton. They had Devin Booker. They had every. They had everybody on that team, and you shut them down. And I was just like, "Huh, maybe, maybe." They lost again. So that takes us to the, to now at this moment the three game losing streak. The um, Brooklyn game, I'll give them. I'll give them a break. You with, lost by five to the top team in the league, or or one of the top teams in the league. And it was a back to back. It was the second end of a back to back. Yes. And you had to travel that on Thursday night to Brooklyn to play them Friday night. So I give them a break there. And Tatum had thirty eight. I'm yeah, seeing. Still, so he played. Yeah, he still dropped buckets. So like. And he st- and he still played good. So even there, I was, yes, and Brooklyn had. No Harden and no Kevin Durant that game, but still they had Blake Griffin, 
They had DeAndre uh, Jordan. They they still had Kyrie. Half, they still had Kyrie. They had it. They had half of their pieces. So I mean, I, I I'll give them. I gave them a break for that. But Charlotte, you lose by twenty one to Charlotte. You got destroyed by Charlotte. You got pants by Charlotte. Oh my God! I don't even want to see what how what their shooting was like that game. Well, I can tell you right now, fucking from the because it gives you the points, the points, the assists, and the rebounds leader. Yep. The big three played. Yep, I know they did. Brown, Tatum, Walker played. But that's that. That's what I mean. Like that. There should there should have been no excuse for that. Uh, I hate to ask you, but yeah, we have to see the box score for this game. Um, alrighty, Jason Tatum, six for sixteen. One for five from three for a whopping 19 points. Minus 28. He was a minus 28 on the court. Uh, there plus was, minus. There was only one person who was who was positive, and that was Evan Fournier at a plus two. So, I mean, it's kind of disgusting. Yeah. But, move, but going past that, Kemba Walker, three for nine. Marcus Smart, three for seven from deep. Jalen Brown, two for seven from deep. Um... Grant Williams was your best three-point shooter, I guess. He was three for four. 18 assists from this team. 18. 18. And you had 13 turnovers. Uh, Charlotte, in turn, had 39 assists. (laughs) 39 assists. And how many turnovers? 11. 11 turnovers. I know we keep beating down the turnovers by the Celtics and the assists numbers by the Celtics, but this team does not play team basketball. They just don't. And until they do, and they find a find some connection with their teammates or whatever, this team is not going to go anywhere at the moment. No, not at all. Um, I think other than Zolak and Bertram, my way here to do the podcast, and Zolak kind of had a good point. They go in there, you know, they're all on their phones, they're all they all have their headphones in, like shooting around. There's there seems to be no chemistry at all. None. No like even with just joking around, like I'd rather them, you know, not be joking around and be very serious about it, but at least they're like at least you're joking around, at least you're talking to your team. Right. At least you're hanging out. But you should be talking about like what plays you want to run. Right. What do you want to do? Where's the matchups you want to exploit? No, there's none of that it's all I'm just gonna be here and shoot, and I'm just gonna you know keep shooting. I'm gonna drib- dribble and try and find my way to get a shot instead of making the right play, and yeah. that's what that de- and that's what it's been all year long. Thirty four percent from the field, thirty four no wait thirty four percent from three, thirty eight percent from the field, and they shot fifty, 50 and forty eight. Jesus. Well, that's what happens when you move the ball around and you get yourself the best shot instead of creating yourself, trying to create yourself the best shot. That's what happens. And arguably, they're they're without arguably their best player. Their best two players. No Gordon Hayward or LaMelo Ball. I wouldn't put Gordon Hayward up there. Tomorrow, LaMelo Ball I'm putting up there. Well, yeah. Because I would put Miles Bridges. I think Miles Bridges has had a breakout year this year. I think that's due in part to LaMelo Ball coming in here and, and... Okay. Out okay. Them. Well, you, they're two. They're, they're two guys that. Yeah, they're big. Yeah, they're, they're two. big. They're, at the moment, they're, they're big two, including they're, they're two court, cornerstone players. They paid Gordon Hayward in the off season, and they have Lamelo Ball, who, in my mind, was gonna be rookie of the year until he got hurt. I think he still should be rookie of the year. I think he should be too, but because he got hurt, I don't I don't see them giving it to him, but that's unfortunate. Terry Rozier isn't their best player right now. Oh hey, guess what, Danny Ainge? You had him. And you decided to get rid of him for Kemba Walker. I mean I I mean I understand like At the time I thought it was a good move too. Me too yeah. Because, but I also, you know, didn't have the brain power or the knowledge I didn't expect- that Danny Ainge would have had, knowing what Terry, I mean, what Kemba Walker's knee was like. I, I didn't either. So he just didn't do his homework on that one and no. lost and lost that. Yep, and 
I I can't believe I, I don't even want to talk about last night's game, but I'm going to. This it, they were on a 14 game losing streak. Oklahoma City lost 14 straight games. I get it. No Tatum and no Walker, but you know what? I don't care. I really don't care. You this is a team even with just Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, and Evan Fournier. And who else played last night? That that was really that was really it for your big pieces. You should still win that game. You should still win that game. And they didn't even have Shy Gilgis Alexander playing. They didn't have anybody play. They had Lou Legere, uh Dort play. They had Dort play, and that was it, really. You shot great from the field. You shot 41 of 97 from the field. From three, 11 for 49. Jesus Christ, can we stop shooting the three? Marcus Smart, one, one for, for ten. ten. Evan Fournier, two for nine. Jalen Brown, four for 11. I'll take. Not great. I'll take. Uh, Payne Pritchard, shoot threes. Four for ten. Forty percent from three. Why wasn't he in the starting lineup last night? Uh, I don't know, but he gave you 28 points. He was your second highest scorer off the bench. So. Right, exactly. Uh, Romeo Langford, uh, 0 for three. Grant I, Williams, 0 for two. I can't stand Langford. For some reason, I j- I don't know what it is about Dude, he's him. A future MVP player. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I know we need to keep these young guys or whatever. Uh, okay, so Trader Danny can't can't give up his picks to get uh. If you take Luka out Dantich. if you take out the three points, the three pointers that we shot from the field, we shot sixty two percent from the field. Damn. Because I took out, I did the math right, so it was forty-one for ninety-seven. Yep. Minus eleven from that, it's it's thirty in the forty-nine from that. Yeah. It's it's thirty for forty-eight. Yeah. Which goes down to uh, five eight. Five out of every eight shots you shot from inside the three went in. There's no reason why you should be chucking up fifty threes in a game. There's no reason for that at all. None. That just says you're just trying to force yourself the three-point shot. This is disgusting. So. They had the Thunder had twenty seven, twenty seven turnovers. Right, and you only had fourteen. But they these... turned the ball over two times as much as you did, and you still they outboarded you, they outassisted you, they disgusting, they absolutely outplayed you. Like, they wanted it more, and you had nothing to say about it. And this is why we've been on here saying, this guy's on the clock. This guy's on the clock. Danny's on the clock. In my opinion, honestly, any everybody's on the clock. I think Brad should be on the clock, but I think that 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 they love him too much for him to be on the clock. Right. Because he had. They, they talked about him. Danny Ainge had that interview. He had him with uh, he, they talked about Brad's offers that he got from colleges. He got an offer for I think they said somewhere around eleven, twelve million dollars a year. Yep. For like eight years or something like that. Yeah. And he turned it down. And Danny says, "Yeah, we want Brad here for a long time, and we want to extend." To, or they just gave him the contract extension to twenty twenty five. Right. He's not going nowhere. No way. They love this guy. Yep. Absolutely love him, and, and it's sad because you got to do something. You got to shake up something. I. I it, if you would have asked me, God, shake if, something. If up. you would have asked me, I would be putting these players accountable for not showing up, not giving the effort, and not playing as a team. True. I, th- I would be given more. I, I, if it's me, I'm giving more blame on the players than anybody. But I'm also not putting Danny Ainge aside either. He's had chances to shake up this roster, and he did not do it. He did it for Fournier, but like. You did it for a year that you did it in a year that you were already losing at that point. So it's like, what? What? So it's like, really, what's the point of making that move? You're not. You're not getting anywhere. And unless you make a move, unless you start winning games to get back into the four seed or five seed, you're gonna be playing the Bucks first round. You're done. And, yeah. First round. You're gonna be a first round exit. 
Unless you can somehow, unless the Hawks or Knicks start sliding down, and don't you get can me start, up. and don't get me started if they have to play in the play-in tournament because that I'm ain't telling you, shit. I'm telling you right now, right? You're gonna if you have to face Charlotte, the first the first game of the play-in tournament, I think you're gonna lose that. I think you're gonna lose that. Oh, I'm not confident in that. I'm not confident if you have to play Miami. I think Jimmy Butler in the playoffs is a dog. Right. That guy is going to kick your ass. Uh, who else have we got in there? Uh, the Bulls are knocking on the door. The Wizards, you you know, have barely been able to beat sometimes. Yep. Uh, the Pacers. Oh, my God. The Wizards made their way back. Holy shit. Yeah, the Wizards went from being bottom of the team to, yeah, they turned it on lately. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't even know that. I thought they were still at the bottom. No. Bradley Beal and, and uh So you got So you you're going to have three tough teams in that play in tournament if you play in that play in tournament. You're going to have the Wizards, you're going to have the Pacers who we all know they, they for some reason even though like their record doesn't say it right now, for some reason they they play they play they play out of their butts. And you got Charlotte, who's looked great this year. So, the Wizards have won 10 of their last 12. Wow. They Good have for them, though. Still left to play. They have Cleveland. They have Dallas. They have Indiana. They have Toronto. They have Indiana. The Hawks twice. Cleveland and Charlotte. Okay. Uh, they still have the Lakers and Milwaukee. But I'm talking, like, those are still tough teams to play. Yep. But they still have, they still play crappy teams down the stretch. Right. They have a chance to solidify being in that 10 spot. Yep. And they're good. They, once they get in, Brody and, and Beal could do something yep. against you. So I'd be careful. You might not be able to last the whole long. So what do you, th- what do you think they get, get to in the playoffs? Like, what, where right now on how they looked, where do you think they is their cutoff? For, what, what do you mean? So, do you think how long do you think they're gonna last in the playoffs? If they make, if they, well, they're gonna be they're gonna be either in the playing tournament or if they make the playoffs and don't do the playing tournament, I give them five games. I think they're gonna win one game. Okay. So you if th- they play in the playing tournament, I give them two games. Okay. They win the first one, lose the second one, and get back. Well, if they win the first one, they're automatically one this one of the. Uh, they're, they're, if they win their first game, I think they're. Auto- if only they're the seven or eighth seed. If they're the ninth or tenth, you, it's like a one and done. Oh, that's right. Yep. Okay. Because seven, seven and eight play the loser. Of that will play the winner of ten and nine, and then you know what I mean. So, if they slide to the ten and ninth seed, you it's a one and done situation until you make it into right. the playoffs. So. I uh, I'm not confident. I'm no. not confident at all. No. So definitely. So you're definitely saying one round done. That's it. Yeah. I I I would have to agree with that. If they make the playoffs, I would have to agree with that. This is not going to be their season. It's going to be a very short season for them. Tony Maserati tweeted it the best. I know what team I'm watching in May. And it's not the Celtics. No. It's the Bruins. Give me Swayman. I want to see Swayman. I want Swayman. I want playoff Swayman. All right. Maybe he'll pull a Tim Thomas out of his butt. Maybe, or maybe he'll pull out a um, Bennington. Who yeah. knows? Um, Patriots have a big week this week. We talk about this. And the draft. And what we think they're going to do this week. Hey, go. Watch. Are you ready for some football? <laughs> This is it right here. This is the big week. NFL draft. We've been hyping it up all month long. We've been beating it down to the ground. And this Friday, we figure out what the GOAT is going to do in the draft. Tom Brady's drafting for the Bucks. No, I'm talking uh, about Bill Belichick. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. I just, <laughs> I'm talking about Belichick and his genius move that he's possibly going to make. Um, What I want him to do, I want him to trade up and get Justin Fields. That's what I want him to do. I want him to bring in somebody who kind of plays 
like the new style of football, that running quarterback who can also pass the ball, unlike Cam Newton, but kind of be mentored like Cam, by Cam, Cam Cam Newton. So that's what I want them to do. I, I, I hate that phrase, mentored by Cam Newton. Yeah, I know. I hate that phrase too. But like, what do you have at this point, really, for quarterbacks? That's all you really have. Uh, I'm definitely not having him get mentored by um, Jared Stidham. So, but anyways. This guy, Justin Fields, he's legit. If th- th- I said many times before, if you're going to draft a QB, if you're the Patriots, I think it's either Mac Jones or him. And it looks like Mac Jones is going to be third overall. McCorkle Jones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh what I would like for them to do is move up to 8 or 10 if if Fields falls that far. Get him. And if he's not available, I'd rather them wait. Yep. Either take a, make a Parsons at 15 or trade back and get another defensive player in another pick in the second or third. Oh, the typical Bill Belichick move. Move down in the draft and then get a linebacker. Don't move out of the first round. But this is a deep linebacking core. People talk, or have been talking about the, the quarterbacks and the wide receivers. There are a lot, a lot of good linebackers and edge rushers in this draft. Right. Move back and take one of them and get an extra pick. That's what I would do. That's what, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm excited. I, the draft is what? Friday? Thursday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow night is the first round. Friday is the... Um, second and third, and then Saturday is four through seven. Okay. Um, honestly, after the, we've been hyping up the first round for for so long because, like, normally the Patriots have been at the bottom of the first round, or they would normally trade out of the first round. Yep. So, th- th- this is this is going to be an exciting week this week for the Patriots. Um, what was I gonna What was I gonna ask? Um. So, what do you think is going to happen at the trade de- at at trade deadline, the NFL draft this week? What, what do you think Bill's gonna do? What do you think his master plan that he's gonna do? All right. So we talked about what, what, is, what you would like them to do. So let's. What do you think they're gonna do? What I th- all right. So I'm gonna take your first. The first thing you said. And what what, is, what I think is gonna happen? Yep. At the NFL draft. Uh in the with regards to the entire league, I think Jimmy G is going to be going. Uh, Jimmy G is going to be moved. Okay. I don't think he's coming here, but he, I think Jimmy G will be moved. I I would like for him to come here. But, uh, me too. Right. Um, I don't think he's be coming here. Um, I think that you could see some different players be moved as well. Uh, and I think that with the Patriots, I I think. Realistically, staying at 15 and getting Mika Parsons is more realistic yep. than trading up. Um, unless, you know, Justin Fields falls him at 15. I would like for him to fall. I'd like for him to get to go up to 10 and go get him, or 8 to right. go get him if he falls that far. Yep. Um, because 1, 2, 3 are taking quarterbacks. Quarterbacks yep. are going 1, 2, 3, and after that, the next quarterback probably won't be taken until pick nine with Denver. And that's only if they don't like Drew Locke either. Yeah, right. That's only if they don't fall in love with him. Right. Um. But other than that, like you're really the next the next team that needs a quarterback that that high. Right. So, uh, it could be something to for them to go get. Um. But like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if. It's Trey Lance at 15 that's available. I wouldn't be surprised if you see them trade out, move down, and get a second or third. Okay. And get another linebacker. Okay. So like I said, there are talented linebackers and edge rushers throughout this entire draft. Yep. Um. That's what I would do. Okay. That's what I would do if I was Bill. I would if if Fields or Jones isn't there. If the the quarterbacks that you are in love that you want aren't there, I would rather them move down and get another linebacker than you know draft someone like you know as long as you stay in the first round 
I'm okay with it. Yep. Because the first round pick gets you that extra fifth year option. Yep. And so if you could get a stud at 26 that you could also get at 15. Yep. Why not? Yep. That's yeah. So what do you think is going to happen? Like what? What do you think Bill's gonna do? What's his master plan? I don't think Bill knows. I don't think Bill knows what his master plan is. Unfortunately. <laughs> I, what do you mean? He always has a master plan. It's a, everything he does is ge- he's a genius. He's something, all right. Uh, uh no, I, no. So I would love for him to get. I think a quarterback. I think he. So it's gonna be you're gonna get a linebacker. I'm not telling you what round they're gonna go in because I can't tell you what's gonna happen. Like I said, it all depends on what the 49ers do at three. Yeah, and what the Panthers do at eight. Yep. But depending on that, I think I would love for them to get a linebacker. Yep. I'd love for them to get uh, a quarterback. Yep. Whether it's like I said, Fields in the first round, or if later on if it's Kyle Trask or uh, uh, Kellen Mudd or or Davis Mills from uh, Stanford. Um, and I like, and I wouldn't mind if they also got um. And they got a, a good wide receiver. Right. So, like, Rondell Moore, Purdue. Because uh, I don't think you're going to get Waddle. I don't think you're going to get Devontae Smith. And I don't think you're going to get Shamar Chase. I think they're going to be gone before you pick. Yep. Um, and trading up for them it would be silly. Yep. Uh, but Rondell Moore, kind of a speedy wide receiver, slot guy. Um, I don't. I like, uh, I think his name is Toomey or Tony uh, from Florida. He kind of, oh, yeah, Kadarius Tony from Florida. Kind of like a um, Swiss Army knife yep. down there. They had him punt returning, uh, slot guy, fast, a little speedy guy. They do they use him with the reverses and all that stuff. Kind of like an Edelman, not as you know tough as Edelman, but it has that same type of fit for it uh, nice. that they would have. Nice. Um, yeah, like I said, there's just a lot. There's a lot of defense. There's a there's a defense. There's a quarterback heavy, wide receiver heavy, and defense oriented yep. draft I would like I'd, I'd wait and there's a there's a guard he's a D3 guard from Wisconsin yep Wisconsin white white water something like that I wouldn't be surprised if that's who Bill picks as a guard just because of Kyle Duggar last year being a, a D2 guy I wouldn't be surprised if Bill went out and got this <laughs> D3 guy like all these guys who don't go to top tier schools unless they go from Alabama. Oh man, he's gonna get one of those treasure pieces again from. <laughs> and everybody's gonna fall in love and be, like, oh yeah, we're making moves. Yeah, right. Making moves, like, oh god, that's what I feel like. What, what do you think he's gonna do? What, what are you thinking? I, I honestly have no idea to be honest with you. I've heard so many rumors. Right. Like at this point, I'm like so confused with like. What I feel like they're gonna do, I honestly have zero idea what they're gonna do. My brain hurts. I'm just thinking. Of I it. honestly, but like, I would rather. I honestly, at this point, I'd rather see them stay at 15. But if you can, but the only way I would trade up, the only way I would trade up, is if that quarterback is there that you want. And for me, that's either Mac Jones. Or Justin Fields. Yeah. Um, would you would you have him consider tra- uh, drafting Trey Lance? Mm. Trey Lance to me, I feel like Trey Lance's body fits the mold of Cam Newton. Yep. I th- and I think he has the big arm. Yep. Um, I, my comparison to, for Trey Lance is gonna be Carson Wentz. Okay. Went to the same school. Yep. Same system, uh, you know, the, the 1A or like that, you know, in between D1, D2 school. Um, he hasn't po- he hasn't played an uh, organized game of football. I think they said in, by the time spring training comes around, it'd be like almost two years. Yep. So that kind of scares me. That kind of worries me. Um, but, if I mean, he can sling it. But the problem is you don't have any speedy receivers really for him to I'd swing probably, it to. I'd probably draft him like if he was available s- second round maybe. Yeah. And you don't and you don't um trade if you don't trade up in the first round and you keep that fifteen pick if he's still there second round that's who I would get. But yeah, but I don't think he's gonna make it the second round. No. But, uh, after the first round you don't really have another pick. I do believe until the third. Oh really? Damn. Okay. 
So that's why I was saying I wouldn't mind if they traded uh, their pick and got a second rounder. Okay. Pick that up. I'm just going to double check because I'm going through the uh, the big board right now and looking at all the teams selecting the second round, and I do not see. Yeah, like you traded. Oh. So you do have a pick. You have the 46th pick, but, in but here, they, they it, have it has a, a mock trade. Okay. That's what you use to move up. To get to the eighth seed, okay. So, or the eighth pick, or eighth pick. Yeah. So yeah. So okay. So, yeah. You do have another pick in the second round, but I, I think staying at fifteen, hoping that Fields falls, was your best bet. Yep, I agree. I think that's your best bet. Yep. That's that's my take. If they get that's our if, take, if they we... yeah, if they get Justin Fields, they're back. Yep. If they don't get Justin Fields. You're screwed. Oh, you're screwed. I don't think Mac Jones. I think Mac Jones is going to be the, the Josh Rosen of, the, no. of the draft. Yep. Yep. So I think I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be your Josh Allen. Like I think he's going to be the best quarterback in the draft. Justin Fields might win MVP first out of this because like out of this group because of his speed and he can be able to do the same thing Lamar did with like throw it, run it, and yep. people love that, so they'll give him the MVP. Even though to me the MVP now it means nothing. Right. After Lamar Jackson one it means nothing to me. Yep. Um Mac Jones is gonna be your Josh Rosen. And I think Trey Lance might be your Sam Darnold. Yep. Which leaves Zach Wilson as your Baker Mayfield, I guess. Yep. Undersized, people count him out. Yep. So Yep. That's what I'm gonna that's go with. That's it, yeah. That's really have on the draft. So we'll have to keep we'll you know, do a recap when Yep, we're gonna do a recap and uh, as we wrap it up, as we wrap up this podcast, we're going to talk about the what we are going to be doing for our website for articles and all that, and then we're going to also talk about the, our, our experience at Fenway and everything like that. All right, so we had to push back podcast seven for an extra week. We appreciate you guys understanding why we did that. Um, we wanted to get our take in from the game that we went to on the podcast. And alongside that, we wanted to get a lump sum of news for this podcast here. Um, some things that we are going to be adding on the website pretty soon is we are going to be doing our April updates, like yep. our monthly updates for the Red Sox, Bruins, Celtics, and the Patriots. He's doing a Julian Edelman article, yep. yes? And you're doing a recap for the offseason for the Patriots, right? Yes, oh. waiting for the draft to, to finalize. That's right, yep. So we're going to have a lot more articles coming in the future. We're going to do a little bit better planning on some articles or whatever because I know we haven't posted an article in like a month. So that we will definitely be putting some stuff up there coming soon. I got a couple of ideas of what we could do. Alongside with that... I got a couple of good video ideas in my head. We might be, yeah, we might be doing a rebuild for the Celtics because right now they suck and blow, and we are going to fire Danny Ainge, and we're going to become the general managers one of these days. That that, that could be dangerous. <laughs> Nobody's safe anymore. Yeah, right, exactly. Yikes. Um... We might do a simulation for the Patriots on after all their moves are done and see how they do. And it, I got some ideas rolling in my head. Okay. So I like it. All right. So I have to. I have to also ask. I gotta ask you, on a scale of one to ten, how do you rate your experience from FMway last Thursday? Give it a nine. Okay. I give it a nine. Um, the only thing I, I didn't like was um, how the lines still, they didn't, mark, like, they haven't really done a good job keeping people six feet in line. I agree with that, yep. Um, and I think a good way they could have expanded that is if they open up all the concessions. Yep. Uh, but, you know, I understand what they're trying to do because, like, you don't want to pay so many people and have so many concession stands open and right. raise all that food. Whatever. It just seems like it's silly to, you know, not, you know, have some sort of way to be able to mark out six feet. But everything else, 
they were really good with the, you know, making sure people kept their masks on, people who stay in their seats. Yep. Um, yeah. I liked it. I mean, I think we made it from Fenway to, to like, your house in, like, an hour. Right. Less than. Yes. Like, we were in and out of the city like it was nothing. Yep. So. Going home, uh, you, you may have hit triple digits in the car for a little bit, uh, but, like, but still, I mean, traffic after the game was nothing. There was nothing there. There was, we had no we had no problems getting out f- from the game. No, not that really. Night. Not at all. No. And normally, if you guys if you guys ever have been to a game at Fenway, you know the traffic after a game blows. It sucks. You are in gridlock for like a half hour to forty five minutes. Yeah. Like I used to always love taking the team because it was so much easier getting in and out, but now. If it stays like this, it can be nice and easy getting in and out of the city. Oh, absolutely. Wow, that was easy. What was your favorite... What, what was something that caught your eye? Like, what, what was the coolest thing about how they ran things? Like, you, like for me, for example, right? The coolest thing they have there, right, is the batting cage. That's it, That's it. But that's by our section where we sat, where the players work out and whatnot. You remember that at all, or yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, that's something I, that caught my eye. The, the, the fact that you you were able to see like kind of like what the players do. So like I wonder if you if we were to get in right at six, if we were to get in right at six o'clock, would we be seeing the players take BP in that cage before the game? I'd be that. Uh, I don't know. That'd be interesting. Maybe. Uh, maybe they do some split stuff where it's the, like half go on the field, half go in the cage. Maybe where some extra people get a little bit extra after yep. in the cage, but maybe uh, that'd be pretty cool. Yep. Um, yeah, that'd be really cool. Uh, hmm. I I still got to go back to. I like how they do the seating. Yeah. I like how it's Me spread too. out and it feels like. You know, you're close enough to somebody where you can still have that good old banter with uh, another fan. Yep. But you're far enough away that you don't feel like, you, like, uh, um, like you don't feel too close right now, which right. is good. It's yep. good for right now. And I like once we get some more people vaccinated and you know it's safer, I love for it to get a little bit more, a little more crowded because, like, I was I feel like when I was heckling Ottavino, I was the only one heckling him. Right. I wish there was more people that joined. I wish I had more people. You were heckling out of Vino. You were heckling Fred, Frenchy. Fran, Franchi, yep. I was heckling them all. I, 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 Hernandez, like, I wish I had more people that to heckle, heckle with. Yep. Uh, it would be more fun, but... Oh, God, it's going to be great when there's more people. Absolutely. Um, I have to go back... I have to go back to the Celtics, like... I still can't believe people believed in this team after that six-game winning streak. I can't believe it. You believed it. You were like, uh, maybe they're back. Uh, yeah, because they beat real competition. I thought they were back. And then they lost to some jokes. And, uh. And you didn't just lose to the Charlotte Hornets. You got blown pants up. by the Charlotte Hornets. 21 point loss to Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, so much are done. So much yeah. are done. Yep. Bruins, on the other hand, I think Bruins have a shot. I wrote the Bruins off. I think the Bruins got a shot now. Yep. I think the Bruins really can do it. Yep. It, it, like it, it, like I said it, two weeks ago, you were like, oh, they lost because you were there. Blah blah blah. Yeah, they but did. Like, no, they didn't. They did. They were injured. No. They were they were they were damaged. Now they're back. They they come they're coming back Guys, and they're playing better. Jesse's only been to one game. That the Boston team has won. That was the first Bruins game. That was against Buffalo. I think that we should bar Jesse from going to future Boston games. No way. Drop a, well, drop the link below if uh, you think Jesse should not be going to Boston sports games because he is one and five. Well, no, don't tell. Don't, one and five. Don't don't you say. Know, I'll go. Don't, I'll go instead. Don't say like because they're gonna like the like the podcast regardless. Hit yeah. the dislike button. No, we don't want the dislike button. Oh Jesus. We want the like button. The like button of Jesse shouldn't be going to these games. Not true. Yeah, not even if you guys didn't want me to go to games. Too bad. I'm still going. Ah, oh, get out of here. But 
I, I, lo- I love going to games too much to, to, to be like, ah, ah. Boo. <laughs> but, um. Boo. Uh, do you have anything else to say, like, to wrap up this podcast, or? If the Patriots slide up, if the Patriots move up to draft Mac Jones, if Mac Jones follows the past three, and the Patriots move up to get him, I'm going to shave my head again. If the Patriots end up with Mac Jones as their QB1 after the draft, I'm going to shave my head. Or Justin Fields? No, Justin Fields is okay. Okay. But if it's, McCor- if it's Mike McCorkle Jones. Oh, jeez. Shave him the head. Oh, my God. I do not believe with somebody with the last name McCorkle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yep, clip it, ship it. Yeah. I-, I pray to God. I pray to God. That is Justin Fields. Okay. All right. So thank you guys for watching this podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. If you didn't, leave a like down below. Don't leave a like if you guys don't want me to go to Boston games. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed this podcast. Or leave a like for both. It's okay. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah. No. We, one, one leave a like. Leave a other. comment. And tell us like you know some ideas that you guys want to see too. Um, I yeah. just want to I just want to give a shout out to my. California side of the family for watching the podcast. Uh, they hey. sent they sent me a picture on Sunday that they were watching our podcast. They I think they watched all six podcasts at their family re- dinner that night. So I appreciate the love and support to them. And yeah. my buddy Tom, he wants to be a special guest on this podcast. So Absolutely. we we're gonna have to make that happen for him. So okay. Um, I just want so thank you guys for watching. Thanks. Thank you guys for the support. Uh, the website link is in the description down below, along with our Instagrams and Twitter. Our Venmo is down below here as well. Anything helps us, you guys. Um, you're checking out our website um, yeah. visits right now. How have we been doing on that? We're doing pretty good, so yeah, keep it up. All right, guys. Thank you guys again. It's been Jesse. It's been Mike. And we're gone. Later, guys. Hey!